Hey folks, and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. So on my right is the Ram 1500 Limited Elite. And I think a lot of people already know that in pickup trucks, Ram really staked its claim as the nicest luxury truck on the market. And that's really held up for a number of years now. And on my left, well, this is the Challenger, because of course this is the brand new Toyota Tundra. Well, it's a year old now, but it still feels brand new to us. And this is the 1794 Luxury Edition. So did Toyota do enough to really challenge the king over here? Let's find out. This is the Tundra 1794 edition. This isn't the top level of luxury on Tundra. It's actually one down technically, but 1794 is kind of their Western themed truck. And I think it looks pretty sharp. You get this massive chrome grill with kind of these cool sort of metallic accents and they have some texture on them. I think it looks pretty nice. When this truck first launched, uh, people were really torn on the styling. It's grown on me. I have no real issues with the way the Tundra looks. Why don't you go in the comments and let us know what you think now today of the looks on this truck. Now because this is 1794, we do get some unique wheels here. That's a nice set of 20s and we get those Dueler HD tires. Rolling back while we're at the driver's side door, why don't we stop in and check the payload on the sticker. Right here, 1,310 pounds, which is actually not too bad. And I do find Toyotas sometimes have pretty low payload ratings. So considering it's a Tundra, I'm okay with that 1300. Now we get back here to the back. One little trick Tundras all have. You got your little tailgate dropping button there and you got your damp tailgate. Now the other thing that the Tundra has for this model year is a fully composite bed. There's no steel here. That's all this composite plastic. Now the one problem with it is it can get slippery. Toyota did put a bit of a texture to it, but still, especially when it gets wet, it's slick. So you'll see from the accessories catalog, we get this great rubberized bed mat. That's absolutely something that I would buy or I would recommend you buy if you're getting this truck. Cause yeah, you can throw stuff in there and it's not gonna be moving around. Now the other things Toyota did, they added some of these cool little indents. So you can put wood in there to have little dividers. You could make a shelf, you could make kind of a tiered system system and then you're getting one hard tie down in each corner and the movable cleats up top and don't forget 400 watts of power right there as well from Ram today, we have the 1500 Limited Elite. Now the Limited is the top trim of the Ram 1500, and then Elite is another sub trim, which they just added for this model year, which makes it even nicer. Now the Elite stuff is mostly on the interior, but still, this is a nice looking truck on the outside, and it starts with this big chrome grill. If you go for these top trim luxury trucks today, you're still getting loads of chrome, and you can see that on both of these. I think the Ram looks good, and once again, I'll stop the video now to say, please go in the comments and let me know which one of these two trucks looks better. Now, when you go for this package too, you're getting a set of 22 inch wheels on the Ram with those painted pockets. Those things are pretty cool. I think that's nice looking. Another feature the Ram has that our Tundra today doesn't, running boards. And actually these are powered running boards. So they come out when you open the door and on a luxury truck that's this expensive, I do think you should have steps. Now let's check the payload. And I gotta tell you, it's a little depressing here on our Ram, 1,031 pounds. So you can haul an extra 300 and change stuff in the Tundra as compared to this Ram. So we get to the back, we get to still a Ram unique feature, the Ram boxes, lockable dry storage. I think it's hard to complain about these. They eat up a little bit of your space inside of your bed, but it doesn't go beyond the wheel well. So it's just that space kind of from the wheel well to the bed wall. That's kind of the one downside. And then of course you have to pay for them. But outside of that, they work really excellent. Plus this one also has a plug. Ram decided to put its plug in the Ram box. So you could even be rolling down the road with something locked in here, your drill or something charging. I think that's pretty neat. Now, when you get Elite, you also get this Ram multi-function tailgate as standard equipment. So it drops like a standard tailgate or use the bottom handle 
and it cracks open like so. And the main advantage to this is actually being able to get right up to the edge of your bed to load things in and out. I have used it a number of times. It is handy. Uh, I do like it. Being able to get in this much closer is nice. Now, outside of that, I'll show you one other feature back here. You do have a cool little Mopar accessory step there, and they built it specifically for this tailgate. So when you're right in the middle, you can get up into your bed. And then, yes, we do have the trifold soft tonneau on here as well. All right, folks, and so now here we are driving in this Tundra 1794, and we've brought Matt along for this one, so we got the trio of Elmers today. Um, so I think we're going to talk interiors, but before we do that, I think we have to start with pricing so everyone kind of understands what we're talking about here because the Ram is expensive. There's no two ways around it. The Ram that we're driving today, the Limited Elite, here in Canada has a sticker price of $104,000. This Tundra that we're in here in Canada has a sticker price of $79,900. Let's call it $80,000. So. There's a big difference between these two trucks. Now, to be fair to the Toyota, there is the capstone above, so there's one more trim up. But we were just talking, if we look interior feature for interior feature, these trucks basically are on par with each other. They both have wireless cell phone charging, panoramic sunroofs, adaptive cruise control, head-up display, rear camera mirror, heated ventilated seats. Um, what else am I missing? Nice leather. So yeah, for feature-wise, they totally line up. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the price difference is just going for the Ram over the Toyota. You know, you can't justify it here by going, oh, you get all this extra stuff. Well, you know, and just to jump in here to defend on the Ram, because there is definitely more attention to detail in the Ram design, and there's a greater variety of materials, uh, metals, woods, burnishing, stitching. It's It's more than in here that's all there is to it is it is it 20 grand more that i have a hard time with sure and i totally agree with you although what you just said is subjective because yes it might be have more materials that doesn't mean it looks nicer it only looks nicer because your eyeball says it looks nicer so this really comes down to which owner is going to look at these trucks right well and ultimately if you're if that's what you're making a decision on then yeah that is going to matter yeah for sure um, but yeah, no, sorry, so let's dive back into 1794. I mean, you're right, we get the brown leather, some stitching, you get, I think, one, two, three pieces of wood. <laughs> so not a ton of wood. Four, four, four. Oh, you got one down here too. So they do <laughs> build in a bit of that wood. But this truck, yeah, it feels, if I can say this, like a, leg, a regular Tundra with brown leather. Right? It doesn't, you don't get in and go, dang, that's a nice luxury truck. They didn't do a lot to set this apart from the other the other models in this in this fleet. Yeah. But then you come back to the price and you think, well, at that price point, maybe that's okay. There's always that trade-off. Yeah. Money uh, versus desire of whatever it is you think you want. Sure. So let's look at the camera system here on the Tundra. You do get quite a few. So your rear view and your top down. You can switch to your nose camera there, down the side of your truck, looking back down the side, looking into the bed, that's cool. Oh, and a zoom in so you can really see what you're hauling back there. And then what else? The auto setting will actually turn the camera on when you come to, I believe it's below five kilometers an hour. So when you're pulling into a spot or something, your camera will fire up. And then the one other kind of crazy camera view is there is the physical camera button down here. And if I hit that, actually go ahead and put it in park or in drive. Now, if I hit that, it'll give us this crazy 3D view around the truck, which I guess is kind of cool for parking. Once you're parked, you hit it, and then it shows you around. You can really get a sense for where it is. But same thing, actually, Dad, if you put it in drive now and try to move, let's just see if you can move with that on. Nope. No, it looks like it's just nope. a park thing. But there you go. That's certainly a, a unique view that you don't get on uh, on too many vehicles. Oh wow, you can even get like a first person view, really what's around you. Cool. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So let's talk about how they drive. Uh, the Tundra that we have today, this is not the hybrid, this is just the twin turbo V6. And I'll, I'll throw it to you, Dad, you're driving. Uh, what do you feel? Well, let me just start out by saying, of course, this is a generational leap with this engine, V6 twin turbo. You know, the 5.7 V8 has now gone away. Uh, a year ago, we drove this truck all the way to the Arctic. I have no problem with this engine, but apparently, based on the sales, a lot of people do. 
because they really have not flown off the uh, the lots the way I think Toyota expected. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if that's an actual issue with the engine. There was a few early teething problems that they seem to have overcome. Um, maybe it's just that hesitancy of buying anything first year. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. Then on the flip side, you move over to the Ram, and yeah, you've got that 5.7 Hemi, which is as old as I am. And it's the old story of, well, I know that thing works. It's been around since forever. So guys don't seem to have a problem with that. But there is too, when you're looking at these price points, uh, new technology, old technology. And you wonder when you get up to a hundred grand if you want to be driving that old technology in terms of powertrain. I don't know. Sure. No, that's a fair point, and that's going to come down to preference too. But I think you're right about that. Um, so, Matt, while you're back there in the back seat, why don't you tell us about the back seat? How do you feel back there? How do you fit? And what kind of features do you have? Well, I actually had I encountered something when I got in this truck that I don't usually run into very often, but I hit the roof. Yeah, and I'm I, I only stand at I'm gonna lie, but five eleven and a half. <laughs> I like to say six foot, but I five actually ten. hit the roof when I got in this truck. And that and there's a bit of a bubble back here that I'm sitting in, which is nice. But anytime I come forward, what four inches? Bam! There's the roof. Yeah. So you know, I'm not giving my dad any ideas, but if he was to hit the brake really hard, I'd eat it pretty good. <laughs> so. That's an interesting thing. Uh, I think that's because of the, sun, the sunroof. You Definitely know, because height. of the sunroof. And we did spend a lot of time in the other truck without the sunroof, and there was no issues back here, but something to consider if you're putting taller people in the back. Yeah. Uh, down low here, actually, these seats are really, they're comfortable, and I also get heated seats, ventilated seats. I've got 400 watts of charging, USB, USB A and C charging back here, and yeah, that's about it. Oh, I got a couple. There's two. Sweet. Right in the middle <laughs> center here. Nice. All right. So I don't know, I think that's enough on this Tundra now. Uh, I think we gotta get in the ramp, feel the differences, and then like you already kind of put it, Dad, see if, you know, where where's that 20 grand? Where Where is that where really is going, right? Let's Absolutely. Go, let's go find out. All right, throw so in reverse, Dad, and we can see the camera system here in this ram. So we start just like in the Tundra with the top down and the rear view. That's pretty much standard across the industry, actually, as the first kind of main view you get. And you can just do your rear cross path, front cross path, front and the top down. There's my rear camera. The Tundra had this too. You got the plus to zoom in on your hitch. Uh, this is going to be your first auxiliary camera. So that could be installed on the back of your trailer. It could be installed inside a trailer. Literally anywhere you want it, you can put the aux cam and that's kind of neat too. Uh, this is cool. I like the way it breaks it down here and actually gives you all of your different views so you know exactly what you're getting to right there. Uh, and then finally, there's your trailer cams. Now we don't have them on, but it's cool too that it lists them. And there's your second auxiliary camera. So I think the Tundra had that one cool 3D view, but the Ram, especially with the auxiliary cameras, has a couple more kind of useful views. My only complaint, and it's always been this, how come we have a huge screen and I'm only getting this much camera view? Why couldn't they have used the whole thing? Outside of that, I do think the Ram's slightly better. And now, here we are in the Ram 1500. So I think the first thing I want to do real quick is just list the things that come in the Elite package, just so people get a sense. Um, so first of all, here in Canada, going for the Elite is $2,000. Once you add it, you get these premium quilted leather seats, you get a jeweled rotary shifter, you get a suede headliner, you get a bright pedal kit, you get the deployable bed step back there, and then I mentioned that multi-function tailgate. But most of that stuff, it's about making the truck look and feel nicer, and it works. And I'll tell you guys, the headliner to me actually makes a big difference. Something about having a nice soft headliner above you makes the vehicle feel more premium. But uh, yeah, I think Dad already nailed it in the other truck. More attention to detail. This truck feels nicer. What do you think? Straight up. I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, I don't think there's a better interior on the market, full stop. Fair enough. What do you think, Matt? I mean, as you were listing those features, you said it had a jeweled rotary selector. I'm like, yeah, there. Yeah, right down it's in there. Right here. So, like, it, it's funny. It's just the, the, the wording, It's you know, it's the same as when you read real estate ads. And everything is open concept and luxurious and amazing. <laughs> you're, you're, as you're reading these features to me, I'm like, okay, $2,000. Hit me. Okay, the tailgate. That one I can justify. Yes. Yeah. All right, maybe that. All right. 
but that's kind of where I'm at. And like we, we were talking off camera, you know, the guy that buys this, it's, it, it fits their lifestyle. It's not necessarily what we would buy. Cause like I, I literally, I, I'll say it now. I heard it off the top, but I went $20,000. I know what I'm buying. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that is going to make the decision for some people. So you're absolutely right there. But you know, we'll we'll talk about this because, frankly, we're probably more practically minded. Yeah. Um, if somebody is considering a hundred thousand dollar pickup truck, they're probably going to be swayed by things that you and I just kind of go, you know, do I care about it? Um, I, because listen, they wouldn't be building these things if they aren't selling them and yeah. they are selling them. That's the big thing. And I think the other trend we have to acknowledge is there will always be a subset of people who they don't just want top level. They want exclusive top level. They want that trim. That's only going to be around for one year and offers them even more than the other top level people. And that's what elite is all about because I don't think this is going to stick around for many model years, right? Ram can then rename it next year, but if they sell it this year, the elite guy has something that the other limited guy doesn't have. So again, you're, you're absolutely right. And Ram, subsets Ram, is, of luxury. Ram is the king of special editions. I mean, not just in trucks. I mean, take, take a look at any of the of the Dodge and yeah. I mean your Chargers and your Challengers and and your Red Eyes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're the kings of special editions. Easter Jeeps. Yeah, uh, it just never ends. Absolutely, and and the real key there is keep the underpinnings the same, but just keep changing the skin, right? And they are very good at doing that. And to that point, as you already mentioned, the powertrain here is pretty old. So, what do you think about driving the Hemi? How does it feel compared to the turbo? It feels like every other Hemi I've ever driven. In other words, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm old. If everybody were to say you're old, go away, you're out of date. Oh, you're old <laughs> technology. Well, yes, I am, but I still work. Damn. <laughs> so I don't have a problem with the Hemi. Well, here's an interesting question then. This one does have the e-torque system, the mild hybrid. But if I didn't tell you that, how does it feel? Like, would you notice, I guess is the question. No, you wouldn't, and we never did, and to this day, I'm still not clear on what it does. I'll tell you what I notice e torque the most, because the, this is noticeable, on restart, when the truck shuts itself off, because it has a stop-start feature, this is probably the smoothest stop-start I've ever felt, and that has to do with the fact that you have that belt starter generator on there, whereas a usual vehicle that has stop-start, it doesn't have that extra juice to get the starter turning. I do notice that. Off the line, I will totally agree I don't notice. Fair. <laughs> so uh, same as last time too Matt you're in the back again so why don't you tell us the difference uh, between the back seats what do All you feel? Right. Well right, right off the hop I have to give the Ram a, a boost and then I got to give it a bit of a, a knockdown. This seat is a lot more comfortable. Okay. Right? We were just talking about this uh, quilted leather, I believe you called it. Right. Seat. They are very comfortable. They're plush. They're very nice. And that's for a rear passenger seat. But this truck rides a little bit stiffer, I felt. That's what I'm feeling back here than the Tundra did. And I, I maybe it's just me. I don't know how you guys are feeling about it, but I think this is a little bit of a rougher ride in this truck. Uh, as far as what I've got back here, it's all comparable. I've got heated seats, ventilated seats. I've got charging. I've got 400 watts of charging power down there. I also do have a ridiculous amount of leg room. I can almost get my legs completely straight and I don't just have cup holders. I have an entire center seat. Oops, if I can release it. It flips down. I have my own storage back here. That's pretty cool. That you don't get in the front. And of course, these two monster speakers back here. So when we get the audio system cranked up, I can hear everything. Yeah. And loads of headroom, right? Oh, loads of headroom. I do not touch. I'm nowhere near the roof in this one like I was in the Tundra. And we have the panoramic sunroof. So Ram kind of figured that out where Toyota didn't quite figure it out as well, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, that's interesting. I will agree with you on the ride. I will say, just so we are clear, I don't think it's a huge difference. It's not no. like, oh my gosh, this no. Ram is uncomfortable. But there's just something about here that translates a little bit more of the road. Fair. And at the last thing I'll say, I love air suspension. I love it because it gives me off-road height. And I love it because it levels out any trailer I drop on the back automatically. Sure. And for those people like my 92-year-old mother, I can dump the bags and drop the whole truck down. Makes it easier for her to get in. Yep. And then to be fair to Toyota, you could get airbags, but only in the back. They don't do four-corner. They only offer rear airbags in that truck, so it wouldn't be the same functionality anyways. Nope. Well, folks, we have arrived at the end of this one. Now, what can I say? You drive this 
this Ram 1500 and it truly does feel special. This is exactly what you would expect out of a top trim luxury truck. And if you're asking me which one is the best luxury truck, the answer is the Ram 1500 Limited Elite. But if you're asking me which truck would you buy, the answer is gonna be this Toyota Tundra 1794. The price difference is just so big, I cannot justify it, especially when you consider, and I know, again, I'm practically minded, this truck will haul more and tow more than that truck for less money. I can live with the interior if I'm getting all of that. So folks, that's how I feel about it, but of course now I need to hear from you. So go in the comments, let me know what you think, which one of these trucks would you buy? As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like hit subscribe hit join to become a member of the truck king channel and then please come right back here to see what we're testing next see ya